Hey everyone, Rick here, and this was my birthday weekend, so I did pick up a few new games, and I thought I'd just go through some of them to show you what I got, and I think this is my first board game unboxing-ish video in my game room, so very historical moment for me right now. These were all purchased from Cool Stuff Inc., Except for a few, which I'll point out. I might as well point them out now. Halo Fleet Battles was picked up at a at my friendly local game store. And that pile of small games and promos uh, was from the Board Game Geek website. But anyway, so what did I end up getting? A lot of these games are, have been on my wish list for a while. Starting over here on the left. We have Conquest of Spiros and its expansion, Lost Treasures. Now those were actually in, I had actually pre-ordered those from Cool Stuff Inc. quite a while ago and then I canceled the pre-order because it was taking so long. But eventually the game was released and so I did add it onto this order. And then here's a copy of Dragon's Gold, which is... A relatively new release as many of these are and then flea market which looks like a fun simple game and I think there's some non gamers in my family who will enjoy that one and then I also picked up heavy steam which just looks so cool where you have large fighting robots but the thing is you're actually controlling them by dispersing steam throughout their robotic bodies to make them move and shoot and other awesome things. And then here's Realm of Heroes. Kind of an abstract looking fantasy game, but from what I've seen online, it looks pretty fun. And then Sylveon, that is in the kind of Anirim universe of games. I guess it's called the Aniverse. And they're solo. They're games made to be played solo. You can play with others also, but um, I really picked it up just for the specific solo mode. And then, of course, Dr the fourth edition of Dracon, after I have... after it took me forever to pick up, or at least to even find a reasonably priced third edition, but hey, fourth edition, excellent. And a couple more battle lore packs for second edition, some of the new released uh, figures for that. Then the King's Armory, which looks really cool. Tower defense style board game. So unlike Castle Panic where everything is pretty much laid out but the enemies come upon you in waves and waves, this one you have some customization and you also get to send heroes out and fight the onslaught. Then we have Brew Crafters which is basically a beer version of Agricola. So you actually have your own brewery and it's a um, worker placement style game and then this one I really hadn't heard too much about I think it was a Kickstarter produced game also Yashima Legend of the Kami Masters and it has minis in it that was the main thing but it looks like a pretty neat maybe a tactical combat kind of game so that's cool then we have Warband which is actually kind of a fantasy Euro game. But from the playthroughs and stuff that I've seen of it, it looks really cool. Am I missing anything else up top? Halo Fleet Battles, of course. Wow, I don't really know much about Halo at all, but I love some uh, fleet tactical games. You might be able to see Fleet Commander over there, and that is a fun game too. This does have miniatures that you have to assemble, but at least the good and bad guy forces are different color plastic, so 
Painting is not mandatory to till the ships apart, which is cool, so I might actually just assemble them and then leave them unpainted. But the ships look really neat either way. And then... Shadows of Malice, the expansion, Seekers of a Hidden Light. Shadows of Malice is kind of a... Um, I guess what it's most commonly thought of is a Magic Realm Light. So it is... This doesn't really help you at all, but it's a overland adventure kind of RPG-ish game. Then the newest expansion for the Mage Knight board game, which there's some comparison to Shadows of Malice there, but um, so that's more good stuff for the Mage Knight game. I also did pick up a pack of the new Battle Lore dice and a few heavy steam expansions. So that adds different kind of weapon arms to your robots, and this adds different kind of pilots. And also an expansion, Suburbia 5 Star, so that's going to add some extra stuff to your city customization game of Suburbia. And then these two games I've actually already cracked open and played because, honestly, these two were some of my most anticipated games. Very light, simple games. This is Dragonwood. Very cool in that you have a line of these enemies and enhancements and other things. And you have a hand of cards and you try to play them kind of poker hand style. And the different kind, like three of a kind, will do one thing or in a row will be a different weakness of the cards and so on. Colors come into play also. And you get to roll dice and combat your heroes against the monsters. And as you can see, the monsters will have victory points. And the uh, like the weapons and enhancements will enhance your future attacks. So it's very simple, lighthearted fun from, uh, what are they, Game Right, which have come out with a couple other really cool games. One of my favorite games of theirs is called Gubs, the card game. But this is Dragonwood, so that is very cool. I'm glad that they released it. And it's not in a tin like a lot of their games. It's actually in a wooden box. Then there's Dragon Farkle. And I only heard about this game recently, but after hearing about it, I knew I had to pick it up. Because I've heard about Farkle before, but really wasn't all that interested. It's just kind of another dice Yahtzee style game where the different things you roll add up to different points. But this is really cool because it involves um, companion. It's all fantasy based so you have uh, different heroes and companions and magical items to uh, change things up in the game. But also what's cool and it doesn't really talk too much about on the back of the box is um, the different amounts that you get as dice results are hundreds and thousands of soldiers you have. And your goal is to get to f at least 5,000 soldiers. Then you get to fight the dragon and try to roll your dice to defeat the dragon with your soldiers. And you can actually battle other players, uh, fight your army against their army. I just thought that novelty of soldiers was really cool. And so tested that one out already and had a lot of fun with that. Last but not least, I have some small games and promos from the Board Game Geek website from their latest Board Game Geek store update. Now, the awesome thing that's going on with them is that they are, somehow, I can't remember how, but they are partnering with uh, Japanese game companies, and so they're constantly getting in Japanese games into the store, which is really cool, in addition to promos for other games. In this lot, though, I picked up Terrible Monster, which is just a 16-card deck of cards and some counters in here, and it's kind of a parody of Magic the Gathering. So it's kind of a light-hearted parody of a typical Magic the Gathering game, but it's only played with 16 cards. It's a two-player game, so you just go back and forth casting spells and you're trying to defeat the other player, and so it's kind of a riff on 
magic if you're interested in magic or even if you're not now these rules and all this is in japanese except the cards actually have japanese and english on them so that's great and the board game geek website does have the english rules next i picked up um there's actually too many expansions in here for eggs and empires a small card game and then this is called The King of Frontier, which is a really neat looking kingdom creating game. So this is just an, ex an example of what your player area might look like. So it's a tile laying game, but each player has their own area that they're laying tile on. And you'll be accumulating resources based on the different um, resource areas that you put into your Kingdom. And then, so that just looks really cool. I don't know if you can tell, but this uh, whole box has kind of a foil shimmer to it, which makes it look neat. And then they also happen to also be carrying uh, the King of Frontier More Buildings expansion. So it's just a small box with some additional tiles in it. And then we have what's called the Vintage Weapon Set for Galaxy Defenders. Just some extra tiles for the Galaxy Defenders game, which is a really cool tactical miniatures battle game. Sci-fi, obviously by the name. And last but not least, the Darkest Night Mercenary promo pack. Um, Victory Point Games has been coming out with a lot of these just one-off hero expansions for their Darkest Night game, and I've just gone hog wild trying to get everything I possibly can get for the Darkest Night game, uh, because it can be played solo, which I just thought was so cool. But So inside one of these typical packs, you'll have the hero card, and then you'll have the laser cut wood hero pawn. It'll focus, probably not. Oh, there we go. And then their deck of specific hero cards. So you get all that in a promo pack. And I think this is the third individual hero pack that they've released. So when I heard that that was coming out, I knew that I had to pick that up. So anyway, that is what I picked up for my birthday slash Labor Day slash, what is it? July, August, September. Three months... Uh, it marks three months that I've been living in this new house. So it was like a trifecta of celebration this past weekend. And so, very cool. Can't wait to crack open some more of these games and give them a test drive. But so far, at the very least, I can recommend Dragon Farkle and Dragon Wood because they are both awesome games. All right, so that is all for now. And as always, thank you for watching. And until next time.